Man, here we are again. Thanksgiving is over. Oh, it was so good. Wait, did I actually tell Grandma thank you before I left? Huh, I think I did. Wait, did I leave that box of cookies behind or did Uncle Gary grab it? He probably grabbed it. He always grabs it. Oh, man, I really shouldn't have had that third slice of pie or any pie. Why do I always eat so much pie? Why is pie so good? Well, we have pie at Christmas dinner. Christmas. Christmas! I can't believe it's already Advent. Christmas is right around the corner. I'm so excited. What should I get Dad for Christmas? Hmm, I'll ask Mom. She knows everything. I wonder what she wants for Christmas. More pie? I want pie. No, maybe a gift certificate. When can I go pick that up? Hmm, tonight after work? No, I have that meeting. Maybe tomorrow during lunch? No, we're having the holiday party then. Huh, what should I wear to that? Oh, that sweater. No, I need it clean because I spilled my pie. Hmm, maybe I'll swing by the store for something new. When can I get to the store? After work? Oh, right, I have that meeting. Uh, wait, what was I just going to do? I mean, I, I really enjoy this season. It's one of my favorites, but well, for a season that's all about peace on Earth, peace seems so not here. Huh. Or maybe it's that I'm not here. Maybe it's a great irony, not being present to the presence of God within myself and in everyone. Huh. Peace on earth. Here we are again, here now. It feels good to just take a breath, to be present. All right, now let's enjoy this most wonderful time of the year. Man, with our kids singing, and I mean, I got all emotional, like just singing one little Christmas song right there. So good. Um, and that was, we know a lot of us will be traveling over Christmas, so it's great that we get to sneak in a little bit of Christmas music to sing together too. So I was, I was very grateful for that. So thank you to the band for that. So as our, our video reminds us, uh, our minds are rarely here, right? This little example of my brain, probably a little like your brain too. Uh, we ping pong between replaying the past and overthinking and worrying about the future, something that goes into hyperdrive, especially in this Advent season, uh, but it's true for the rest of the year too, right? That on any day, at any moment, our minds are most often somewhere else. So this month then, we've been naming this, and as we've gathered in worship, we've made room to, to step into a different way of being. So we've been practicing meditation, being mindful in our time together, and encouraging each other to try that at home during the week as well, and to build then those, the, that muscle memory, that practice within us, to be people who are mindful. And to do that because this is what the Jesus story invites us into, into a life of being present because in the present moment, that is where God is, right? And so today, uh, we also want to set aside time to practice a little bit more, uh, to practice in a different way, though it is a practice that we come back to as a touchstone for us here at Salt House because we believe it's a practice that helps us to listen for God in a particular way. And we're going to do this by listening to a passage from the Bible through the practice of Lectio Divina. So for those who may be new today or new to this practice, uh, Lectio Divina is Latin for holy word or divine reading, a practice that's been around since the third century. I just love sh like doing something, a practice that's been around for 1,500 years. I mean, that's, that's kind, of a, kind of an awesome thing. Uh, it was formalized kind of into four steps in the 12th century, and it involves rereading a section of the Bible in a very prayerful way listening for a word that gets our attention and then prayerfully holding that word or phrase and looking for connections to our life now and why it might be getting our attention right now and what God is saying to us in it. So reading and listening to the Bible in this way, it affirms, uh, affirms a number of great things. Uh, it affirms that we believe that scripture is not a static one-dimensional text, but it's still alive and kicking and breathing today. And in this Advent series, as we lean into being present, 
it's, we're naming how we're affirming how God, God can be heard and experienced in this living, breathing, ancient book that we call the Bible. That God is here in this text in the present moment. Even when we read passages that we've read before, we will hear it in a different way. Because as people, we've named, you know, we are people who are always living through change and being changed. If that's who we are, we are always going to be in a different spot today than we were the last time we may have read this text or even different than we were last week. So we'll hear and experience fresh things every time that we read scripture, which is pretty amazing. So this is a practice then for us to keep in the old like tool belt of life as something to practice on our own and, on, and in smaller groups as well. And I do want to name too that um, you may find that Lectio is just not your jam and that's okay too, but thank you for hanging in as we do it together. So thank you for that. So our reading today, it's from Luke's gospel. It is the assigned text for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, and if you're listening or watching online, you may want to turn to it. We're looking at Luke 1, 26 through 38, but we're looking at the message version. So it'll be a little different words and phrases than we've often heard. So again, Luke 1, 26 through 38. Um, so we're going to turn to that now. So friends, I invite you to get comfortable in your seat. Uh, put your feet on the floor if that's comfortable for you. Roll your shoulders back. Uh, take in a breath and just pay attention to your breath for a moment. And let's actually, let's, let's be quiet and pray together too. God, we do become aware of our breath, mindful that you are as close as our breath, that you are with us and for us and in this present moment. So we open ourselves to listening for you, letting our bodies and spirits arrive here in this place as we turn to you. So friends, let's, let's begin. The first step of Lectio is reading. We read the text. So I want you to stay in a place connected to your breath, attentive to our first time, and we're just listening. We're just listening to the text with no agenda. You will recognize most of it, and it's, it's not a short text. So as it kind of keeps coming, just let the words uh, just fall on your ears. And I invite you to listen with your eyes closed if that's comfortable for you. So Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You are beautiful with God's beauty, beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be call called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son old as she is? Everyone called her barren and here she is six months pregnant. Nothing you see is impossible with God. And Mary said, yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. Then the angel left her. So now this next time reading through, we listen for a word or phrase that touches our heart, that gets our attention. Um, so that's what we're listening for, just one word or phrase. Uh, if you're a more visual person, I invite you to pull out that, um, your bulletin inside the insert. On, on the back side of that is this text, if you want to see it and engage that way. Um, just pull that out. Otherwise, you can just keep your eyes closed. Um, don't expect lightning to strike when you hear something, but just a little shimmer for you that you feel maybe curious about or confused by or stirred by or angry about, just something that you respond to. And when the, you find that word or phrase, uh, gently recite it to yourself. Just repeat it gently uh, during the short silence that will follow the reading. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married 
to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You are beautiful with God's beauty, beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like this. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son old as she is? Everyone called her barren, and here she is six month, months pregnant. Nothing you see is impossible with God. And Mary said, yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. Then the angel left her. If you're willing, I invite you to share out loud the word or phrase that has touched your heart. No word, you know, like no commentary or explanation, just that word or phrase. Just kind of speak that out so we can hear what people are hearing. Yes. Hmm. Nothing you see is impossible for God. Nothing you see is impossible for God. Ready to serve. Ready to serve. You are beautiful with God's beauty. You are beautiful with God's beauty. Let it be with me. You're beautiful inside and out. You're beautiful inside and out. But how? But how? Mm-hmm. Barren. Barren. She wondered what was behind the greeting. She wondered what was behind the greeting. Thank you for sharing. So the second step of Lectio is reflection. So we each ponder the word that has touched our heart and ask where the word or phrase touches our life today. As we do this, don't be afraid of distractions or busy brain, uh, memories or thoughts that come up for us are simply part of ourselves. And so they, as they rise up, we want to just give them to God with the rest of ourselves. And if you've been doing any of the meditation practice too, you've noticed how that, that's just how our brains work, even as we're listening and trying to focus on something, that stuff comes up and that's okay. So embrace those things. And really the question that we begin to hold is the question we often come back to here at Salt House is, God, what are you saying to me? So that's kind of the question we hold as we listen. Continue to repeat your word or phrase, just holding it in dialogue with God, listening for this why question. Why this? That grabs our attention today. So this time we'll hear the reading read by Danny, so you get to hear it in a different voice. And then again, we'll hold some silence after. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the virgin's name Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. Spoilers. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call him Jesus. He will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him to the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? 
I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son old as she is? Everyone called her barren and here she is six months pregnant. Nothing you see is impossible with God. And Mary said, yes, I see it all now. I, I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. Then the angel left her. a chance to share what we're hearing in a moment after our final reading of this text. The third step is responding. The third and final reading is for the purpose of experiencing how Jesus is calling us to respond. So what is God in this text calling us to do or become today or in the week to come? It's the second question that we often ask here at Saw House. You know, first we ask God, what are you saying? And then we ask God, what am I going to do about it? God is always inviting us into transformation, right? Into seeing our lives in a fresh way. Like when we talked about this through our fall series, uh, we moved through compassion and generosity during that series. And now in this season of Advent, you know, we're talking about being more present. So maybe it's related to that. So how are we invited to be or to do or to see things differently in light of what we're hearing? So please note, answering this question may take longer than the next few minutes. So maybe questions that we hold for a while. So maybe just savor that. But we listen for our response as we hear the passage a final time. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning, you're beautiful with God's beauty beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son old as she is? Everyone called her barren and here she is six months pregnant. Nothing you see is impossible with God. And Mary said, yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. Then the angel left her. Friends, now we make space to share what we're hearing. We've tried uh, sharing in a few different ways in the past. Today we're going to break into groups of two, three if necessary, Uh, Just to take one minute each to name, you're going to get together and introduce yourself if you need to, Uh, share the word or phrase that came up for you, and then also that kind of why question, Uh, what's interesting, what's curious, what's disruptive about what you're hearing, and so we'll do that and aim to take just kind of no more than one minute each as you begin to name some of that stuff. And do know that it's always okay to say, um, I, this word came up or I didn't hear anything or to say, well, that came up and I'm not really sure why. Uh, like all those are okay answers in the midst of it too. So I encourage you to find someone that you did not arrive here with. Uh, so uh, that way you can always talk to the person you arrived here with later as you go home. Or So find someone that you can, that is not someone that you can necessarily talk to later. So that's okay if you need to stand up and kind of move around a little bit too. So let's move smoothly decisively as we uh, find someone, introduce yourself, and um, just take a quick minute. And introverts have permission to go second, so. (laughs) 
Um, we're not going to take a lot of time for other for to share corporately, but is there something that you're like, I really should just share this, or just something you heard from the other person with permission you can share? Anyone want to speak something? No. Okay. <laughs> just thought I'd ask. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Um, I just want to offer a quick word about this text on this final Sunday of Advent, this Sunday where we have been talking about love. We've lit this fourth candle uh, representing love, and we get to hear about Mary. Mary. There's a Ben Stiller movie from the 90s, I think. It's called There's Something About Mary, which I only bring up uh, because of the title, uh, because I think the title is very true, that there's something throughout time that has held Mary in a place of honor and wonder and curiosity for many of us, especially folks from the Roman Catholic tradition for whom, you know, Mary is really held central to the practice of faith within the Roman Catholic tradition. But I think there is something about Mary. And I appreciate Richard Rohr uh, tries to kind of help us understand what's happening theologically with Mary as we encounter her, what's happening kind of in the deeper depths of our souls as we read about her and experience her. So he names first how Jesus, I love this, he's the, he's the representative of the divine, right? He is the gift. So Jesus is the total, this is how Richard Gore says it, the total givenness of God to God's creation. Jesus is the total givenness of God to God's creation. I, just, I love that. And then Mary, as we look at Mary, Mary's the representative then of humanity, of us, the stand-in for all of us. So she then shows us how the gift is received. And so maybe we see, probably unconsciously, like some of ourselves in Mary. I think at the same time when I say that, we probably can go, oh, what? Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like Mary. You know, like we also have kind of that uh, kind of reaction to it as well. But I want us to note that the gospel, like the text, it, there's not a single quality of Mary that is named. It doesn't say anything about her, nothing. It doesn't say if she was, that she was worthy, that she was smart, that she was good looking, that she was filled with all kinds of virtue. Not a single quality is named. What is said, and all that is said about her, is that she found favor with God. And in the message version, we had that you, you are beautiful with God's beauty is what, it's how it's translated in this version, but that's like God has, God has found favor on you is what we usually hear. And favor doesn't say anything about the one who is being favored. It says something about the one who is doing the favoring. Does that make sense? And the word, the Greek word there that's translated into favorite actually means undeserved love. You have found undeserved love unmerited, totally free from the giver's side. And when I read this, I just think of how hard it is for us to receive an undeserved gift. We want to prove that we've earned it, that we're worthy of it. We want to believe that about ourselves, that we're smart enough, that we're holy enough, and Mary just doesn't go there, right? She makes no claims to deserving it. The thing that I wonder about then for us on this fourth Sunday of Advent is our own need to remember that this something about Mary is something about all of us. That we also do not need a long list or even a short list or any list of virtues or achievements and that in our unachievingness, we too have received undeserved love. We receive the same gift, the gift of Jesus is received by us in that same way that Mary received it, not by earning a stinking thing, but in our willingness to say what? To say yes. That's how the gift is received. So how might we say yes to knowing and experiencing this undeserved, lavish love that is given to us, knowing, knowing it this week as we move through the final countdown to Christmas. What will your yes to love look like this week? And what might it cause you to do? How might we, as we said when lighting our Advent candle, remain in God's love? So as we finish then our time in Lectio, we get to hold all of this in the final and fourth step of Lectio, which is to what? Remain to remain in God's love. Like that is a piece of this practice always to come back to that, to simply rest as the beloved of God in the presence of God, to to hear, 
to hold all that we've heard, uh, spoken from the Bible, spoken in the conversations that we've had, to hold all of that with uh, just as a word of grace and hope for us. For God most certainly speaks through us as a gift to each other. So we're going to just make some space to remain. So as we remain and finish this holy time, um, just hold this sacred space for each other. The band's going to come up. I invite you to close your eyes. And then let's pray as we remain together. I invite you to connect with your breath again.